If you're looking to sell your home in the next 90 days, you've come to the right place. My name is Sean Rampersad. I'm a financial YouTuber and mortgage broker. I'm going to give you 42 ultimate tips that you can use to sell your home for top dollar. Now, I'm not a real estate agent. I was in the past. Uh, I'm going to go through these steps with you because these are things that your realtor might not tell you and other people might not tell you uh, and things that people sometimes need to hear but don't want to hear. So I'm going to go through all of these things with you right now. I'm also at the end of the video, make sure you stay to the end because I'm going to share three secret tips that I use when I'm flipping property to sell property for up to 10% higher. This is like a cheap strategy that I use and it, it's worked over and over and over again. So I recommend you use this type of strategy if you're planning on selling your house. Now, I know the video is a little bit longer than what I usually uh, post. I have tons of other videos on my channel, so please feel free to take a look at those if you're looking at buying, selling real estate, getting mortgage financing, investing, that type of thing. I have tons of information there and like and subscribe to the channel if you uh, like financial advice, if you want to make more money, if you want to save more money, um, like and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out. But let's get right into it. So if, I'm going to break this down kind of by uh, area. So First of all, we're going to talk about the things that you can do if you're selling a property. You want to set yourself up financially. So the first thing is to get pre-approved for a mortgage. Uh, you can get pre-approved by me, another mortgage broker, your bank, whatever that might be. Because before you sell your property that you've been living in for years, you want to make sure that you can afford a new property and you want to know exactly how much you can afford. You want to plan it ahead, uh, your, uh, plan your sale ahead of time. So basically, when you are getting approved for a mortgage on the property that you're selling, you want to try to get the lowest possible rate because then you can go and offer that low rate as an assumable mortgage to people that are looking to purchase a property. This could make your property more attractive and help you win a bid. You want to plan to consolidate all of your debt when you sell this property. So create a list of everything, all the credit cards, all the lines of credit, any, you know, kind of payday loans, whatever you have, make a list of things that uh, you're going to want to pay off. And when the property sells, you're going to pay those off. The remaining money you're going to be able to use to purchase your next property. Make sure you do not change jobs during this process. That is one of the biggest mistakes people make is they change jobs and then they can't get qualified for a mortgage. So make sure you don't change jobs without talking to myself or another mortgage broker. Next, we're going to talk about preparing your home for sale. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to declutter, get rid of everything off the countertops, in the kitchen, in the bathrooms, clean up your desk, Clean up everything off the floor. Start packing, actually. Throw all of the things that you don't use on a regular basis into boxes. Put it in a storage room or in the garage, tucked away. If you can show your property with more space available, it's going to be more attractive uh, for potential buyers. Deep clean the property. You want to go pretty hard on this. Make sure the bathrooms are super clean. Make sure the floors are clean. The walls are clean. Wipe off any mirrors. Uh, make sure there's no dishes on the counter during showings. Deep clean your property before you show it. And you also want to make sure you get rid of any weird smells. So a lot of people walk into a house and the feeling of the property is going to give them... Uh, kind of a, a reason to buy or, or one reason to buy the property. So if they don't feel good in the property when they first walk in, if they feel like a stranger in your property, they are not going to want to put an offer in on that property. So you want to make sure that there's no weird smells and you want to make sure the property is not in a mess. When I talk about weird smells, I'm just going to be real with you right now. Cultural food has strong smells. Some people don't like it. You don't want to deter them. I know you might say, well, that's what we do every day, but it is a deterrent. Also, and I told you I was going to be straight up with you so you know exactly what things uh, are looking for. Also, the smell of water. 
If there's been any leaks in the property, you're going to want to get rid of that smell. You're going to want to put some air fresheners in the house, The one, not the cheaper ones. You want the ones that plug into the wall and are constantly running so that your house smells good all the time. I recommend smells like lavender or citrus, uh, something like that, where people tend to like and love that type of smell. Neutralize paint color so this, i walked into a house the other day and the owners of the house they were jamaican obviously and they had jamaican colors all over their house well you know what i'm not jamaican and i don't want uh to see jamaican colors all over the house i just want a simple plain old house so what i recommend doing is neutralize the color turn it white beige something like that grays uh, these are colors that appeal to everyone and then they can turn the property into whatever they want afterwards but neutralize the color of the property pair any minor issues you have kicking around like i walk into some houses sometimes and the basement uh the baseboards are all rotten and uh and moldy and stuff like that well that automatically when someone sees that it's a deterrent you don't want to have any type of deterrent in your property so i would just get rid of those things ahead of time because it's going to come up on the inspection anyway and you're going to have to pay for it if the people are going to close on your house so just do it ahead of the time it does two things for you number one if they make an offer on the house this is not something that they can come back with after the inspection and say okay give me a thousand dollar credit or two thousand dollar credit for that it's done it's done fix leaky faucets if the faucets are leaking you're gonna have to fix it anyway so fix it get it done want to enhance the curb appeal so when you're showing uh or when you, someone's coming to see your house the first thing that they see is they see the outside of the property. And if the lawn is not mowed and it's a mess and there's dandelions everywhere, it'll kind of look like a hoarder house to them right off the bat. And then it's like a first impression thing, right? So then they go into the property and they have this first impression of the exterior where it looked like shit. And then they will start looking at the rest of the house and scrutinizing the rest of the property. It's a downward spiral. So it just doesn't make sense to have the front of the house looking bad. You want the front of the house looking good. Pull your weeds, pull your weeds. Like get your lawn looking good uh, before you list it. If you have to hire a company, they're not that expensive. Probably cost you 150 bucks to do it, but it will make a huge difference. And it could add tens of thousand dollars of value to the property if the uh, curb appeal is good. Stage your home. So if your home has old furniture, um, you know, like old brown couches and stuff like that, that, you know, some people are, love their couch. They're a day. I have an uncle right now. He's got this couch that he's had for God, 20 years or something like that. He won't get rid of it. Get rid of it for the purpose of this. You're going to want to stage your house. Staging companies, basically what they do is they come into the property. They charge you a small fee to stage the property. It could be a couple grand or something like that. But it could add 30 grand in value to your house if the property looks like a show home. So you, you want to get the property looking as much like a show home as you can. Depersonalize the property. So... We're talking about feeling here and how people feel when they walk into your property. One of the things that they're going to want to feel is they want, are going to want to feel at home. Uh, women especially are, are really into this. They, they really want to feel at home in their, in their new potential properties. So when I say depersonalize, you're going to want to take family photos off the wall. You're going to want to take the memorial for your dog uh, off the countertop. You're going to want to just get rid of all those personalized things and make it look as much like a show home as you can. I recommend you walk through a show home just so you can see what it looks like. It's very plain Jane and uh, generally modern. Nice touches of green here and there uh, with some plants and that type of thing, but they keep it very, very simple. And that's the kind of look that you should be going for. Maximize your lighting. So I recommend bright white LEDs all over the house. Before you have a showing, turn on all of the lights in the house. You're going to want to make it moody. You're going to want to make it bright. Um, even some lamps in the corner for some mood. Like I've added these kind of reds for the mood for this video. Um, 
there's things like that that you can do to make the property more moody. And uh, people like that when you they walk into a property. Great kitchens and bathrooms. Kitchens are a little bit more expensive to upgrade. I mean, you're probably talking four or five grand to upgrade a kitchen. If you have old beat up cupboards and stuff like that, then you're going to want to upgrade that. At the very least, take a paint gun and spray the kitchen bright white or black, uh, just a plain color. Um, it will add huge value to your property. So definitely the kitchens. The bathrooms are super inexpensive to renovate. So you could just get somebody to come in, retile all the way up to the ceiling from the bathtub to the ceiling and uh, redo the floor. That'll make the bathroom look way better. Also the countertops, you can get prefabricated countertops at Lowe's, Rona's, uh, Home Depot's, that type of thing for $300 and then plop that new vanity into place, uh, hook up the plumbing and you've got a whole new bathroom there. So definitely upgrade the bathrooms and I would say also upgrade the kitchen if you can afford to do so. Next, let's talk about marketing. This is the fun part. This is the part where if you're not good at it, you definitely need to hire a real estate agent. I'm not a real estate agent. I'm not telling you to hire a real estate agent because I'm promoting or pro real estate agent or anything like that. But if you're not good at marketing yourself, you're definitely going to want to hire a professional to do so. Because if you do it yourself, you might get 10 viewings. If a realtor does it, they might get 100 viewings and you could probably list it for a higher price if you are listing it uh, through a real estate agent just because they should be getting you more viewings because they have access to the MLS, they have access to Teams, they have access to uh, all these different things and they're most of them are professional um, marketers. So when I say marketing, we're gonna talk about some specific things. So let, first of all, hire a professional photographer. Don't take the pictures with your iPhone. I know the iPhone takes great pictures, but do not take pictures with your iPhone. You want a, a DSLR camera, a photographer to come in, uh, take video of the house, uh, you know, do a video walkthrough and also take photographs of your house professionally with a wide angle lens and bright, bright lights uh, throughout to make the rooms look bigger. Uh, that's going to get you more showings. More showings is going to get you uh, more offers. More offers is going to get you more money. Simple as that. So hire a kick-ass realtor. There's a lot of shitty realtors out there, but there's also a lot of good ones. So if you want a referral to a real estate agent, please contact me through the YouTube channel or give me a phone call. My number's in the comments below. I can refer you to agents that I know are good. Uh, there's a lot of hotshot agents out there as well. Some of them may not have time for you. So you want to get somebody that's kind of in between that's experienced. Uh, there's a lot of rookies out there being told what to say and uh, they don't know what to do. They really don't know what to do. So you're going to want to get someone good if you're going to hire a real estate agent. No matter what you do, whether you're listing it with a real estate agent or not and doing it by yourself, make sure your house gets listed on your local MLS. So what an MLS is, is a multiple listing service and basically what they do is it's a, a place where properties are advertised in your state, province, uh, country, whatever it might be. Also, it can be pushed out to Zillow or one of those other uh, you know MLS type systems. But every state, every province uh, has an MLS type system. Uh, in Canada, it's Realtor.ca. In the U.S., they have Realtor.com. You know, UK has something different. Australia has something different. Like every uh, country has a different MLS type system, but they all have it. And you need to make sure your property's on there. Uh, one strategy that I liked using when uh, I used to sell property is I would list a little bit high and I would do price reductions often. Every time you do a price reduction and it's posted on the MLS, your listing gets emailed to everybody that has your criteria on there. So if they're looking for a three bedroom house, two story, you know, whatever, whatever specifics under 400,000, then that's the, the criteria that they'd be looking for. You do a price reduction, 
they get an email about your property automatically. So it's constantly refreshing. Do it often. I would do it every week at, at the very least, even $500 reductions until the property is sold. But no matter what, you've got to price the house right. If you price yourself to way too high, then the property is not going to sell. It's going to sit on the market. It's going to go stale and uh, people are going to lose interest in the property. So make sure you price the property high. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get a real estate agent to come in and do comparables on your property compared uh, all the recent actives, compare all the recent solds uh, in the last few months and find out, kind of narrow down what you think the property is worth. In your mind, you're always going to think that your property is worth more. It's, it's not, it's not, you're not that different than everybody else. So I'm just telling you this straight up because I know a lot of people always like to list high and it sometimes can be a big detriment to their listing. Make sure you highlight unique features of your property. So for example, one unique feature of a property could be air conditioning unit. Another one could be a hot tub. I mean, there's a lot of things that can make a property unique. You want to highlight those and put those in the description of the property so people see value in it. You can even put a number beside it. So for example, if you spent five grand on the AC unit, right? $5,000 spent on AC unit and that will create value in a person's mind. Obviously, you're going to want to share this on your social media. So you need to make sure this is everywhere. Okay, you're going to want it on Instagram. You're going to want it on LinkedIn. You're going to want it on Facebook. You are going to want to share it on every Facebook group that has to do with real estate in your area. You're going to want it on every buy sell page that you can possibly find. Uh, you're going to want it on Craigslist. You're going to want to have this property splattered everywhere. So with the YouTube video that uh, is made about your property from the photographer or videographer that you hire, make sure you get the link so that you can share that uh, walkthrough with everyone. Pictures, yeah, they're good, but the video walkthroughs are fantastic because then people are in your property and people that are uh, actually interested, they are the ones that may contact you. So make sure that's out there. I hope you're liking the video. I'm not done. There's still a lot left, but please like and subscribe to the channel. It helps me. Next, open houses. You need to get some open houses happening on the property. You need to advertise those open houses on your local MLS, on your Craigslist, you know, on your social media, everywhere. Get some foot traffic into the property. You're not going to get a ton of people through. I'm just pre-warning you. In most marketplaces, open houses don't do that well. But you may get somebody that gets excited about the property and get a deal done right then and there. So make sure you do open houses at least every couple of weeks. Provide information on local amenities. So you're going to want a list of what gyms are here, what schools are here. Uh, you might want to talk about, you know, kind of crime rate and things like that about the neighborhood. Get people excited about the neighborhood. Show value in it and your property will sell. Next section is going to be negotiating offers and closing the sales. So let's get right into it. Number one thing you're going to want to do when negotiating is you're going to want to stay objective. Don't get emotional. People will try to lowball you and you could tell them to go and fly a kite or you can try to get negotiate with that offer. Every offer is good because you can then go to other people that are showing interest on the property and say, we have one offer. And they might come in with a stronger offer because there's already an offer and on the property. It creates momentum. It creates curiosity. It creates all of these things that you need to get top dollar for your property. Respond to offers fast, okay? You're going to want to respond to offers really fast. Don't tell them to wait overnight. I've tried that technique so many times where I'm like, oh, I'll talk about, I'll talk about uh, to my wife about it and I'll tell you tomorrow morning. A lot of times when I've tried that technique, the people have gone back on the MLS, started looking at other things, spoken to their realtor and said, I want to go and see these other properties before I make a decision on this one. And it doesn't work. So just respond, respond to the offers fast. 
be willing to negotiate. So you're going to get this offer. It's going to be low ball. Okay. It could be a hundred thousand dollars less than your list price. You still want to make that offer potentially work. Not the hundred thousand dollars less, but you're going to want to tell them where you sit. So let's say the offer is 400,000 on a list price of 500,000. Okay. You got to get the people to come up. The way you're going to get them to come up is you're going to want to prove to them that you're pretty stuck to your price. So maybe go back to them at 590 or 495 and uh, they'll be sitting at 400. Then they'll have to come up a big jump. If you see they come up a big jump, then you know that they're really interested in the property and you keep on grinding from there. It's a tennis match. Keep that in mind. Please don't get annoyed. So many people get annoyed when they're negotiating these transactions and it kills deals. You want to make it work. Every deal is a good deal. You have to get your house ready for appraisals. You're going to have to get your house ready for inspections. These are all things that are coming when an offer comes. You also need to understand that there's going to be some contingencies to these offers. Uh, contingencies could be called quite a few things. It could be subject to financing. It could be subject to inspection. It could be subject to appraisal. There's a lot of contingencies that people put on real estate transactions. Almost every real estate transaction will have contingencies. So keep that in mind. Make sure you understand them. If you have any questions about contingencies, make sure you talk to a licensed real estate agent and someone good, not a shitty agent. Make sure you talk to somebody that knows what they're talking about. I want to be pretty transparent about what is happening with the property because they're probably going to find out on the inspection anyway. So I would just disclose if there's an issue over here and let them know that, yeah, I'm going to be fixing it before the possession date. That way they can write that into the uh, contract and it becomes a non-issue because things will come up on inspection. So if you know about them, then fix it. Next are the final steps and closing this transaction. So the first thing is you're hiring a lawyer. You want to make sure you hire a real estate lawyer. Remember that real estate lawyer, because there are some lawyers that are jack of all trades and they will not specialize in this area. Real estate lawyers aren't very expensive, but they know exactly what they're doing. They'll make sure that if anything screws up in this transaction, you're protected. They have insurance that you're protected under. So make sure you hire a good real estate lawyer. If you're dealing with me and I'm uh, the mortgage broker representing you, I get discounts with a lot of uh, with a lot of real estate lawyers. Uh, so just reach out and I'll uh, be able to hook you up. Uh, also, a lot of real estate agents will be able to get you a discount on real estate lawyers. At least a good real estate agent would be able to do that. Make sure you review the documentation very closely before you sign off. You want to know exactly what you're getting yourself into. Make sure the people on the other side don't have a way out of the transaction because that could be a big waste of your time. Imagine this. Imagine they put subject to walkthrough on the contract and then you, you know, let's say the walkthrough is the possession date is two months from the day you guys signed the initial contract. Two months later, they walk through the property and they go, I don't like this property anymore. Then what do you do? That is their way out. So they could have wasted two months of your time, your selling time, make your property stale, destroy the whole thing for you if you're not a hundred percent sure. That's why it's good to have a real estate lawyer and a, a, a real estate agent look at the contracts before they're signed. Next th steps after this are very, very simple. So you go and you're going to sign off with the lawyer. Uh, after that, you're going to remove all your stuff from the house. You're going to want to clean that property up. Don't leave your stuff in the property. It, uh, it just, it makes a big mess. It, uh, creates issues for the lawyers. It creates issues for you. So just give yourself enough time to make sure you get everything out of the property. Uh, provide the seller or the, sorry, Provide the buyers of your property, uh, the utility company's names, if uh, they're going to be transferring the utilities, and away you go. Now, let me tell you kind of a tip I use, one of my dirty tricks that uh, I use to often get 
my uh, properties that I'm selling, I'll get more money for those properties. So I said at the beginning of the video, I've gotten up to 10% more because of this strategy. So basically the strategy is, is I list the property a little bit below market value. I only do this when it is a seller's market, okay? That means that there's more buyers than there are sellers. So in a seller's market, I list it a little bit below market value. This creates just a frenzy of showings. It's just unreal how many showings happen at this time. People will be lined up outside of your property. And uh, that automatically creates kind of that auction uh, feel for people so they'll start going oh my god like what's happening with this property I got to get in it's such a great deal blah 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 and uh, then we'll say there's 50 showings on this property today so anyway I, I do that first and uh, after that the frenzy happens usually you'll get a bunch of offers and on the properties sometimes the offers will have no conditions on it which would be amazing for you to get and 99.9% uh, .9 of the time the offers will be higher than what your list price was so that's my main trick on what you can do to get more money for your property up to 10% more always tell them that there's other offers coming in or second showings that type of thing do you want to up that offer and uh and they'll give you more money so guys if you like the video please like and subscribe to the channel i'm not going to waste any more of your time thank you very much check out my other uh my other videos on the youtube channel some of them are really good if you're buying or selling property and uh it'll help you save money okay thanks a lot